Welcome to ETF Edge, your go-to place for everything exchange-traded funds. I'm your host, Bob Pisani. It is often said that software has eaten the world, but it isn't the only investable asset. Some are arguing that hard assets like real estate and infrastructure are an important diversifier away from technology. Let's talk with Dan Foley, CBRE Investment Management Portfolio Manager for the newly launched IQ CBRE Real Estate at Real Assets ETF. I know that's a mouthful, folks. I'm going to explain it. Don't worry. It's an actively managed equity strategy that invests in companies tied to real estate, to real assets, infrastructure, and real estate. Also joining us, my old friend Tom Leiden, Benefi Vice Chairman. Uh, so, Dan, you launched this uh, new ETF a month ago in the midst of a tech frenzy. Yep. Not great timing, but you did it. You say inflation makes hard assets a great investment. Can you make the case why now and why hard assets? Yeah, look, we think investors are coming to the asset class to have inflation protection. We're seeing large institutions globally enter this space. We think retail investors should be too. We think that the um, ETF market is lacking options in this space. And frankly, we just think there's a lot of opportunity here with secular changes in things like digital transformation, uh, decarbonization, and then just frankly mispricing in the market. So the opportunity set um, offers a robust double-digit return potential in our opinion. Does this track here, we're showing this, now this is brand new, so it's, it's, it's got a month of history, but does sure. it, you, you've back-tested this, does this track things, does it track REITs, does it track commodities, is there anything, what, what, is, what are you following? Sure, so at CBRE Investment Management, we have a history that goes back in the REIT space back into the mid-1980s. We've been live with infrastructure strategies uh, for over a decade, so we have quite a bit of history here, and of course an investment management platform that is um, nearly $150 billion uh, in scale operating within this real asset space. So we have a lot of history here, a lot of expertise and boots on the ground. We think this is important for investors. And we do think that over time, this has been one of the most attractively positioned segments of the real asset universe. And we think yeah. there are a number of opportunities yeah. that make that true in the go forward as well. So we've seen higher interest rates in the last uh, week. It seems to be impacting real estate. REITs have had a, a rougher time this week. They're underperformers. Uh, we had Nassim Tlaib on, the author of The Black Swan. He was on this morning on Squawk Box. He said, be careful about real estate because it's, it can be unstable due to the higher rates. Does it concern you? Are you in a different kind of space than he's talking about, generic real estate space? Yeah, look, one, I think valuations are very compelling. So I would take the other side of that and look at the opportunity on the other side, right? History has told us that when you get parts of the real assets universe, like real estate trading at 20% discounts, the go forward provides, you know, 15 to 20% returns. That's a history lesson, but we think the, the you know, elements are in place for a pretty strong total return going forward. And within the infrastructure space, you have a very different dynamic of very stable assets, right? You turn on the lights in the morning, you brush your teeth with the water, you know, you, you get on an airplane or you ride the train like I did this morning. You know, these assets have a very different cash flow, stable cash flow profile. And they're also the assets that are enabling a digital economy, data set or cell towers, right, enabling decarbonization, right? You need these leading infrastructure companies to make yeah. that investment, and it's driving growth that we think will drive a differentiated outcome. I want to get to what you're, what's in this fund, but, but Tom, I want to get you in here. You, your thoughts on the hard assets. We've heard this play before here. Is there a case now for owning them or owning them still or, or, or continuing to own? Well, in the last couple of years, Bob, as you know, as the market's been challenged, uh, one-third of advisors have had 10 to 20 percent of their allocation in alternatives in some of these areas. Uh, obviously, energy was a great performer. It's come back down and settled. But if, if you look at REITs, for example, office buildings, uh, retail, somewhat challenged. But also there are some other areas, and that's why I like this is actively managed. If you right. have areas like healthcare or data centers or, or areas uh, like residential, which is in demand right now. Right. You can kind of pick your spots, is that right? Yeah, well look, if you think about, you know, I think it's a bit of a misnomer when you read the headlines, what is the REIT sector, right? Yeah. The REIT sector today is a lot different from the REIT sector prior to the global financial crisis, right? Nearly 60% of the investment universe are what we call next generation type real estate assets, right? Where the private equity players, where new allocations are coming in, that's things like self-storage, some of the areas that you mentioned, things like single family for rent, right? The 
cash flow growth and outlook trajectory of these entities very different. Yeah. But they've all suffered with the REIT sector in a REIT environment. So we think the yeah. you know, valuation dynamic today is incredibly compelling. You know, Tom, there are other hard asset ETFs that are out there. We've covered them here. Um, I, Van Eck, our old friend, Jan, yep. uh, he has got a natural resources ETF that holds uh, basic materials. Uh, with an emphasis on energy that's out there. There's Flex shares. They, they have a, a, a global upstream yeah. natural resources index. Another one I can't pronounce. Gunner, yeah, right, correct. G-U-N-R. Yeah. They have uh, water and timber. Look, here's a little list here, uh, along with positions in companies uh, in energy production and metals extraction and agriculture. And then there's the old stalwart. There's the Vanguard Real Estate Fund. It's, it's REITs. Um, so there are other choices out there, Tom. There are, Bob. There, and in ETFs, there are tons of choices. The whole idea is you got to lift up the hood and see what's inside. I mean, areas like Gunner and Van X were very heavy on energy. So they did really well in the last couple of years. Recently, it's come down a little bit. So that, that's important to see. But areas like uh, agriculture, where you can kind of pick your spots, yeah. base metals, there are ETFs out there that represent all those areas. So you can be very, very selective. Yeah. But the idea is if you're going to have an over... Uh, uh, arching hard asset yet need to understand A, is the manager have a fixed index or is there going to be an active strategy right. and they've got a history of being yeah. doing a good and job as, you as know, far this as is an active, active strategy. strategy. Right. But this is a differentiator though when we took, you mentioned energy yep. hard uh, commodities essentially that, that's what's not here though. So I, I see infrastructure companies so let's put up what we've got in some of this in this. I see infrastructure companies like Crown Castle, um, and those who don't know, they do cell phone towers and fiber optics. Uh, I see real estate companies here, like public storage. We all know them. Uh, they do storage. Then we have utilities. There's Next Era. I see there. Uh, WC Energy is a utility company. Uh, Equinix, we had the CEO on this morning. That's huge in data centers. Uh, Sun Communities is also there. They do uh, manufactured housing. That's right. Uh, I guess. What I don't see here is commodities. <laughs> I don't right. see Freeport Mac brand. I mean, it's a copper. They're producer as a hard asset. Uh, I don't see oil stocks. Um, why, explain why commodities are left out of what would what? think of the natural hard asset as yeah, would be commodities. Yeah, when we approached the marketplace and we kind of looked at the landscape, what's out there, what, what can investors get? There was a very wide field of real assets. And not only what are they investing in, right, what segments of the universe are they investing in, but in what flavor are they equities? Are they dead? Are they a mix? How are they making these allocations? Um, and frankly, if you do the historical analysis, the risks and returns are so-so, right? And so we think that the opportunity, again, is more focused in these areas that have secular trends, like I mentioned earlier, with digital transformation. Equinix is a great example of a world-leading entity, just had a great investor day yesterday, 7 to 10% growth, growing the dividend 10%. You know, that's the kind of assets you want. These are essential to the new economy, right? And you can get that, we believe, at a discount. So we believe that, you know, focusing on the areas of real assets that we are focused on provide more opportunity and a differentiated view from what's in the marketplace today. Yeah. So do you think, I guess, Tom, where, I'm, I'm, I'm just having a, uh, it makes sense to hold infrastructure, for example. So you can argue in the REIT space, you don't want to own maybe apartments now, maybe, or you don't want to own office spaces, but you want to own infrastructure. You want to own Equinix. Uh, you want to own public storage. Yeah. You want to own warehousing. There's been sub niches in the REIT industry that we've been playing with for 20 years. I mean, the industry knows this, yeah. right? And you can actually have tactical asset allocation within the REIT industry. Well, it's you're not, right. So you're mentioning tactical asset allocation. We're in surveying advisors, Bob, in the last couple of years, almost two-thirds of advisors have taken money off the table in the traditional 60-40. And what they're doing is looking for either stick it in cash, $6 trillion in money market funds these days, or they're buying alternative strategies. And in many cases, it's going towards active managers who've got a history of doing a good job in those areas, as opposed to individually buying indexes that happen to be thinly sliced. Well, you can make a case for base metals. There are great base metal ETFs that are out there, agriculture ETFs that are out there. However, 
you need to make the decision on that allocation. When things are tough, advisors love to turn to active managers, and we're seeing more of the flows they, going. They to do, those but areas. it's it's yeah. more expensive. What what are we charging for this? Sixty five basis points. Yeah, so we, well, that, that's not ten basis know, points. Right, right. You know? It's it's not. At, at the same time, if you're an advisor and all you're doing is indexing during those tough times, and you look on your bench for help and managers those indexes aren't going to provide that. So what we're doing now is we're seeing, hey, we've gone through some of these tough times. What's going to get us out of those? What does it look like a year from now as we've had rising interest rates? Where can you get good cash flow? That's, that's real money that's coming in. That's right. really important. And then most importantly, where can you diversify that if we happen to see an equity pullback or as rates are rising and bonds still aren't making any money, where can you go to actually have some stability? Interest rates, you mentioned interest rates. Let me ask you the 30,000 foot question. Interest rates are creeping up. Yeah. What if any impact is this gonna have on the overall ETF market? Where do you see, we're, we're not blowing out, but no. you see one and two year yields, they're trading towards the high end of their recent ranges. Right. People are a little concerned it might break out and that could slow down the rally we've been seeing, the overall rally. It, well, it, it absolutely can, but a couple things that we're seeing, you can see this by the flows, the average advisor today feels a year from now rates will be lower. So what they're doing is although you're getting five plus percent in money market funds or short term treasuries, that's great. They don't think that's going to be available a year from now. So they're going longer duration. They're going into higher credit quality types of ETFs. They're using more active managers as well with the idea that I mean, it's tough to believe, but we're actually going to see appreciation in no. bonds once rates start going down. But that date of when rates will start declining keeps getting pushed out as inflation is still something that's not under control, right? Dan, um, CBRE is a long history. I was the real estate correspondent for CNBC 30 years ago, more than 30 years ago. Yes, I am that old. Thank you for asking. Uh, I used to cover this, this is Coldwell, Coldwell Banker, you know, all those old sure. companies that are out there. Um, is this your first CBRE's first foray into ETFs? You've got a label here. I know you're partnering with Index IQ. Yeah, we've partnered with Index IQ and, and New York Life Investments. That was our distribution partner. This is our first active ETF. We did launch a passive ETF uh, roof last year. Uh, so that's dedicated specifically within the real estate space. So yes, relatively new. Um, but we, again, think that there is an opportunity here because real assets in the ETF market no. are you know, a pittance of where the, the capital is, right? Mostly still sitting in open-end mutual funds in the market. Again, as I noted, somewhat mixed return and risk profiles over time. So we think, one, you, you need to be active. There's an opportunity in the ETF market um, and you need to be active because policy risks, you know, thinking about just real estate. Yes, there are risks. How can you avoid those risks and go after the right opportunities globally? And how do you think about infrastructure assets, which do have a regulatory and policy dynamic that you have to, to understand, right? That's, that's where you want institutional level expertise. And that's what we bring to the table.